Thank you, Lord. Today I've got a very, very, very good subject. Tough for the people who aren't here. Tough for the people who aren't here. They're going to miss out on something wonderful. Uh, I want Brenda to put up a scripture there to start out with. It's out of 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Which says, But as it is written... I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. There is something in all of us, in our future, that you cannot imagine. The utopia our governments are trying to build upon this planet is mere hell in comparison to what Jesus Christ has for them that love him. But before I want to get into this message, I want to ask us to rise, ask the Lord for his, for his blessings to be upon this. Lord Jesus, I pray that you open our hearts and our spirits to what you have coming. Lord, you instruct us that we shall lo look on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. So you will open our minds and our hearts and understand us to receive with gladness the joy that you have set before us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> in, John, in John 14, uh, Jesus speaking, one to four. Let not your heart be troubled, neither uh, you, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And now he says this, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare, prepare, prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where, where I go, the way you know, and the way you know. So Jesus has something for us, for all those who are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. There are no other strings attached to this. If you are blood-bought, blood-washed, you are as clean as you will ever get. You cannot add or take away from that. You will be like the ones where it says, and they overcame by what? By the blood of the Lamb, the words of their testimony. They left not their lives unto death. We are one of them. You're as clean. You are going to see this place yet. So in six days, God created the heavens and the earth. It's been 2,000 years since he's been working on heaven, on this man, these mansions. They will be good, I guarantee you. If, if earth 
in its early stages was as beautiful as we see Earth now, even, even more beautiful, because it was, it was pure and clean, Satan had, it wasn't uh, broken down by sin. If that was good, when God said it is good, he meant it was good. Look what Jesus said. He goes and prepares a place for us. And that is so unbelievable, it's the beauty of it, that Paul said that it is unlawful for him to utter some of the things that he has seen when he was up in heaven. So in, uh, in Colossians 3, King James Version, verse 2 and 4, it says, gives us an instruction here, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God, with, with Christ in God, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So, yeah, is there something coming in the future that we will rejoice in? There's a guy, I just read, uh, uh, heard a, a little short testimony about the thief on the cross, his credentials, what he had. When he came to the, enter into heaven, the angel asked him, so how come you're here? He says, I, I don't know, the man in the middle told me, I'll be here. So have, uh, what church are you from? Or have you been baptized? And he asked him all kinds of questions. He couldn't answer none of them. He said, all he could answer is, Jesus allowed me, told me I was going to be here. Are you one of those? You're blood-bought. I can clearly and honestly tell you, you are going to be there. You will be one of those. That all, that's all you need. This was the first person that Jesus redeemed by his blood. And what did it take? It seems like such a contradiction of what we're being taught in the church today, that we have to be part of the church, we have to do, do this, and that's all good. You want to do those things, but they have nothing to do with your salvation, absolutely zero. The only thing that you can cling to and hold on to is a gift that you've been given, is that you're washed by the blood of the Lamb, and eternal life is given to you. You cannot earn it. You cannot in any way, shape, or form earn it. It is not possible because Jesus' first display of that was the thief on the cross. That's the only way you will get in. You might have done a lot of things for the kingdom, but there's still only one way you will get into heaven. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. In Revelation 21, 22, uh, 21 verse 22 to 25, uh, we'll read about what heaven is going to be like, what's waiting for us. Let's read about some of that stuff. And I saw no temple therein. We didn't need no more temple. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb there are the temple of it. And the city, this is the, the, the holy city, has no need for the sun, nor neither the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. This is, this is so foreign to our thinking. We are so, we are so used to material things on the way they work, like the, the, the ecclesiastical, uh, the, the, the terrestrial bodies, the celestial bodies. We all, we all understand those. But these parts here, what you, the, the light, there will be no need for sun. It's, it's hard, hard for us to grasp that. Well, how do we have light? Well, when Moses asked to see the face of the Lord, and Jesus said, God said to him, I will appear by the cleft here. You, do, you turn your back. And just the brightness of the light of God lit up Moses' face so that the, he had to veil his face so the children of Israel could not look at his face. That's how bright the light of God is. So there is no darkness. There is no shadow. That's not possible anymore. When God is light, the light is sort of from the inside out. Now when you have a, a light from the outside, it transposes things. It, it, uh, it uh, makes shadows. There will be no shadow there. You will not need to be afraid of your shadow anymore there. There is no shadow. Some people are afraid of their shadow. And, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. The city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the lamp is in the light thereof. And the nations of them, notice what it says here. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and the nations of them which are saved. That means every one, kindred, tongue, race, nation of, of, of the nations. Doesn't matter what your color is. There is no color when it comes to God. Where they are, which are saved shall walk in the glory, light of it. And the kings of the earth, <coughs> excuse me, do bring their glory and honor into it. And this here is, is the, the thousand year reign, by the way. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall, shall no night be there. So night is done. All you night owls, there will be no more night owl. Eh? Night will be no more. In Revelation 22, 1 to 5, and you will read about some of the things that will be there. And I'm sure it frustrated John to explain those things with ink, with pen and paper of what he's seen because there is no possible way to write down something that is beautiful. You try to, if you even have, you have seen some. A good example is somebody shows you pictures of the mountains. They go to the mountains, they show you pictures, and you go, I've seen that. But you go there and you see it, especially at a certain time of the season. Then you, it's, it's, it's different, you have to admit. It's not the same as seeing a picture. So even a picture is not worth a thousand words, even though it's, it's pretty, it's not the real deal. Once you get to see the real thing, then you can tr truly appreciate the beauty of it th thereof. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Do we have something like that now on earth? Everything is so contaminated, so, so uh, uh, polluted already. Clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And on, the, on either side of the river, there was the tree of life. That same tree of life was also in the Garden of Eden, which ironically, Adam and Eve could have eaten from it. So they, could have, they would have not had to go through what they did because Jesus said, if you read it, God said to them, let us remove them from the garden lest they would eat of the tree of life. Read it. It says there. So he made sure they did not eat of the tree of life, but now here we'll be able to. Which bear twelve manner of fruit. It yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall, shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and no need of candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord has given them light, and they shall reign forever and ever with him. I am sure of one thing here. This does not even begin to bring out what the reality of it is. This just writes down uh, morsels of what we're going to experience when we get there. Just the thought that there will be no sickness. I must have missed some scriptures here because I think I did here. Uh, it's Revelation 21, 1 to 5. I missed that one. Can you put that one up? I jumped ahead of here, unless I did. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. Thank God for that. Now this world is made up of 75% sea. But then there will be no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We know what that feels like, all you men who are married. When I first saw my wife in her in her uh, wedding gown, it was, I was blown away. This is going to be a hundred times better. I'm not taken away from that, but this is totally a different situation here. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. This is now where the fun begins. And they shall be his people and God shall, shall, shall be with them and be their God. Not only will he be their God, we will want him to be our God because of his perfect and righteous judgment. All the things that, the goodness that you have heard of God, you will see, even though we see some of them now in part. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So up till then, there will be tears. But if you have tears now, if you have things that break your heart, if things if you have sorrow, it will be no more sorrow. It's going to be gone. 
you will enjoy God and life and health and everything that this body cannot offer us will be offered there. Neither sorrow, there'll be no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. They will never again be. I don't even know if there'll be a mention of them. Maybe a remembrance every now and then. I don't know. I cannot preach on that. I don't know for sure. But I know one thing. They will never, ever exist. So what is coming from, for each and every one of us is exactly this. Every part, no pain, no death, no sorrow, no, no, no uh, crying, they will all be past tense. What is coming is ecstasy is the word to describe it. In your fleshly or physical body, you will, could not possibly endure or enjoy what is coming. God actually has to give us, each one of us, a new body to enjoy what's coming, an everlasting body that can enjoy everlasting life. Behold, I make all things new. And he that sat on the, upon the throne, behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. This is as sure as you are sitting here. If you have loved ones there, you will meet them. If you have, have uh, people that, uh, parents there already, you will meet them. What, whoever has gone before him and has depended on the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse him from all his sin will be there. I really don't care what they did. If they had trust in their heart that the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed them from their sins, they will be there. I don't care what you know of them. What is the last thing you, you, you thought you heard from them? And again, I'm not going to make judgment on any other, other thing on, and other than what the Word of God says, that if you trust that the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all sin, you will one day enjoy the splendors of heaven. And I can't even up here begin to, 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 to bring to light and to life how beautiful heaven must be. Thank you, and I pray that this will have encouraged you and that it will give you... Remember, we're fighting with the battle already won. We are, already, we are, we are fighting with the knowledge that I've watched that hockey or football game and I went back to rewatch it, and I already knew the outcome. I know the score. I know who wins. My favorite team won, but I'm still going to watch it anyway. I know that sounds uh, not fair, but who says it's fair? We have a God that everybody can have that same <clears throat> hope that is within us. Everybody. It's meant for every human being on the face of the earth. That same hope that you and I have is meant for everybody. So, yeah, from that point, it's, to me, very fair. May the Lord God bless you and give you that hope. And if times are tough, look onto what's coming. Set your affection on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, and you will start rejoicing in what God has. So the Lord bless you with this. Now, Brother Steve is going to have a short little message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be an interesting message. Brother, Day, uh, Brother James, he gave you the positive. Sometimes you have to hear a negative. And it's not easy. I'd rather hear the positive. And for us to enjoy the positive, you have to have the negative too. Those two, they join hand in hand. And my message this morning is, is very interesting. It's, I, I begin to light the great white throne judgment and the lake of fire. Now, we had all the good stuff where all the Christians, hopefully I'm not preaching to people here that are not saved. If you are not saved, you'll get the message. This is a message for the unbeliever. It's a place where no believer will end up in any which of the message. The great white throne judgment is not for the believer, neither is the lake of fire for the believer. Get this in mind. When God 
will make the final end of all things. There's coming a great white throne. If you ever want to really realize, go to YouTube and just plug into a court deal where one is sentenced to death or life imprisonment for his crimes against humanity. There are lawyers, there's judges trying to prove him not guilty, and the other side is guilty, not guilty. But at the end, he's been found guilty and said, I sentence you to die. The screaming and the agony that person goes through is unbelievable, horrifying, hopelessness. But that is just a picnic. That is nothing what is coming to this whole wicked world. When you realize that God someday, at the end of all ages, when he'll make an end of all things, he'll have to have less say so, when he will judge the wicked for all their works, their evilness, they will stand before this great judge. There will be nobody there to plead with you or for you. This will be all over. There will be just two books, the book of life and another book where your, all your evil deeds are written in. Either the blood of Jesus takes care of this or it will be held against you for all eternity. It is not a joke. I'm warning you this morning, those who are listening to me to radio or YouTube, God loves you. He doesn't want you to die in your sin. He wants you to be saved and born again by His Spirit, washed in the blood, so that you will live with Him forever. This place is not meant for the believer. This place is meant for the devil, really, and his angels. But woe and behold, people pick this they go against God. I have nothing. You won't have nothing to do with your salvation. I will have nothing to do with your plan of salvation. I will go my own way. To escape this great white throne judgment is very simple. Like Brother, Dave, that Brother James had, it's strictly and strictly just the blood of Jesus that you have to apply to escape the great white throne judgment. I don't care how you represent yourself to please God. It will not work. You can wear the longest dress. You can wear the, whatever you want. Reading or writing or singing songs or even reading the Word of God, which is a good thing. At least you'll have a chance. But even, I am talking to my people now, to the other eyes. Even reading your sermons that you think are so dearly and precious to you, they will damn your soul if you listen to them. Trust me, if you do not turn to the Word of God and to Jesus for salvation, you are damned forever. It's not easy to say that, but those sermons will never, never save you. They are full of confusion. That's why the Word of God will stand and be held against you at the end when you come to this great white throne judgment. Why didn't you read my word? Trust me, it's not going to be, oh, I didn't know. No, you will know. It will be all before your eyes. Everything will be open before us. You will have no chance. And all of a sudden, we will read in Revelations 20, let's read in Revelations 20, 11 to 13. Tom will, uh, Brendan will put it up there. And he said, And I saw a great white throne judgment, and him that sat on it, from whose, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Think about it. When that happens, everything will be fled away because there will be no place for it. It's just going to be you and God and God alone. From, <clears throat> excuse me, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. All of a sudden, God, instead, the cross of Jesus takes care of your sin, or God will take care of you at the end, when you stand before God Almighty, He will hold all your works, all your evil deeds against you, and there will be no blood of Jesus there to wash him off. It will be the lake of fire. That's the horrifying story of that one. Either Jesus pays for it, or you pay for it. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Those that are put into, the, into hell, when they die without Christ, they'll come out of there yet. Not to eternal life, to eternal damnation and confusion. They'll be taken out, even the lake of fire, even the hell, death and hell, will be cast into the lake of fire. This will be done away. And now, all of a sudden, all that were ever born in this world, both men, women, anyone that's a human being will get raised up at the last day, all unbelievers, no Christians, they will all be in heaven. There will be no boarding and believer there. This is a place for the damned. This is a place of judgment that God will judge. And all of a sudden, Everything, if you think that you can commit, nothing wrong with crema cremation now, but if you think that cremating your body, that is you, are done away, forget about it. God knows where you are. You cannot destroy your inner man. Your soul is eternal. It cannot be burned. It cannot be destroyed anymore. You are done. It's living forever, either with Christ or it's going to be in the lake of fire. That is... What happens when we stand before God? Now, when God is through with all the judgment, with all the unbelievers, there is coming a lake of fire. Why the lake of fire? Have you ever wondered? Why fire and brimstone? Because sin, if you look at it, it grows. It escalates. It doesn't stop. God has to contain it by fire. You don't want God in this life here. You will be without God in the other life. But it's going to be outer darkness. It's going to be full of pain and agony. This is not a joke. Hell is not a joke. The lake of fire is no joke. You will not be able to grasp for air. You will be totally and completely hopeless. You will fall, fall, fall. Always in fire always in pain and agony, thinking of the day where you could have said to Jesus, Lord, I need you, save me. This will be remembered in the lake of fire, trust me. Those things will not, your brain, your mind is not stupid, it's going to be the same. You will remember all those things. The pain and the suffering that you will go through, it's not worth it to reject Christ now. Think about it. Jesus wants to save you. And says, in death and hell, Revelations 20, 14 and 15, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast, excuse me, was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name written in glory? Is your name written down in the name's book of life this morning? It's only you that know. You between you and God. If it's not, make a decision this morning. Don't push it off. Tomorrow might be too late. You have to make a decision for yourself. The preacher's shaking a preacher's hand won't do it. Going to church won't do it. It's between you and Jesus where you make that one eternal and completely decision that will last forever is say yes once. And Jesus will do it. He's that faithful. If you will come to me, he says, I will in no wise cast you out. That's the love of Jesus. The same shall, 
And the, in Revelation 10, Revelation 14, though I forgot to give that to Brendan, sorry. And the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And if you think it's going to end, think again. If God will end, the lake of fire will end. And we know for a fact, I know for a fact, that God, he didn't have a start and he doesn't have a finish. He always was, he always will be. He cannot deny himself. He cannot end himself. He is forever eternal, forever and ever without ending. Now, when it says everlasting punishment, think. Just let your heart and your mind sink into this. Radio audience, you too, my friends, listen to what the Holy Spirit is talking to you. You think it's horrifying to think, just put your hand in the fire. It's painful. But think how long you'll be in the lake of fire, burning forever and forever, without hope, never to get out, and the most and the worst of it, you'll be forgotten. God will shut you out. He will not be remembered anymore. That is why is it so horrible? Why is it so horrifying that God will have to put his creation into a place like that? Just in case you don't realize this was created for the devil and his angels. But if people, they do not turn to this Jesus who suffered so much, God coming down from his glory, and he knew we couldn't save ourselves, left everything. He was despised and rejected, that God has sort of sacrificed him on the cross of Calvary for you and for me to shed his blood so that you might be saved. This is the only sacrifice that will get you out of hell. There is no other. There is no other salvation giving among men whereby we can be saved is through the name of Jesus. And the smoke of their, of their torments ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. And in Matthew 25, 41 and 46, Brandon, can you put this up? Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And, there shall, and they shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Think this morning, whoever hears on the sound of my voice, is it worth it to live for the devil? Is it worth it to reject Christ every day? Young people, hear my voice. Tomorrow is never promised to anyone. I don't know what is going to be the next hour. I know for a fact I will be with Jesus. But if you hear the Holy Spirit thronging on your heart to turn to you, Jesus for salvation, don't push it off. Please, it can be too late. And once you've passed over, once you have gone into the other side, there cannot be a return unless God has a point or there's a plan for you. But once you are passed, once you go into the lake of fire, into hell, you cannot get out. Just as sure as when you turn to Jesus for salvation, you cannot return back. You are here forever. Just as sure as you reject Jesus as your only salvation that is, that is, that is shed at the cross of Calvary, you will never, never, never change. Jesus is the only one that can change you. 
You cannot go back this way. You cannot be this way. You are once, are you there? Once you're in hell, you're in hell. Once you're in Jesus' hands, you're in Jesus' hands. You are his forever. So remember, Jesus loves you. The blood of Jesus is sufficient for your sins. That's the only, only one you can trust. He's trustworthy. He loves you with dearly. His heart wants an earning just to have that fellowship with him. He loves you. He wants to have you everything. So the Lord bless you and make you a blessing. And thank you 